Well, we're here on the Pirate Preview, and Bubba got a big game. And and uh, this guy, I think he's uh, been busy here recently, right? Our next guest? Yeah, we had him on back in late July, and very excited to have the head coach of Charleston Southern, Autry Denson. Coach, how are you? Man, I am excellent. How are you guys doing? Good. Uh, coach, you look well-rested. I mean, this is football season. I thought you would have some, like, you know, like some dark circles. I mean, I, under your eyes, you would be really tired, but you look uh, like you're well rested. Are you getting like a lot of sleep during football season? You know what? I am blessed, man. God wired me a certain kind of way. So really, I only need four hours of sleep as long as I get up and work out in the morning. So I'm an early riser anyway, man. I go to bed fairly late, 11, 11, 30. But uh, as long as I can get up about four o'clock, 334, get my one on one time with Christ and then head to a uh, CrossFit. Again, if I work out, I'm fine. If I only get four hours in on workout, now I'm struggling for energy. So the key is uh, my one-on-one -on -one time with Christ and then working out. That does it for me. Coach, uh, this past weekend you had a tough one uh, against Monmouth. Uh, if, if you will, uh, give us a quick recap of that game. You know what? It's simple, man. Uh, we, we didn't play two and through our standards, our championship habits and our standards, and uh, that's what allows us to be consistently consistent. Uh, week one, we came out and we uh, exceeded them. And uh, we saw uh, we got the results we wanted uh, week two uh, for whatever reason. And that is uh, that falls squarely on my shoulders. Uh, we did not. And so it's very simple. Uh, we didn't follow our plan. We didn't uh, play to and through those uh, championship habits and standards. And as a result, we didn't get the desired result we wanted. Coach, I appreciate uh, that comment that you took the responsibility and accountability. I'm not uh, pointing this to any coaches out there, but they're just a general statement. There's a lot of time in business when it comes to a business or any kind of leadership there are a lot of people that are not taking responsibility and accountability uh for failures um in this particular case a loss so thank you for doing that because that's very refreshing uh but let's talk about uh, the first game though you played against your Charlestown rival the citadel and you had a, a better result Yes, sir. Uh, like I said, we came out, the guys were fired up. Uh, we, we we were able to go out and uh, really just, uh, again, play to those uh, championship habits and our standards. Uh, uh, and, and, and we got the desired result. Guys were flying around. Uh, it, it was a little extra oomph because it was uh, your crosstown rivalry. Uh, but nonetheless, man, the thing about it is that we got we, we to gotta find a way to, to, to carry that over week to week. So, Coach, um, talk about your ball club offensively. Uh, I know at quarterback, uh, you have Chambers. Um, you know, he's completing over 60% of his attempts through two ball games. Tell us about him. Uh, Jack's doing a really good job of uh, going out and just being who he is. Uh, when you have a veteran guy, in particular that quarterback position, the uh, that's the identity of your offense, right? And so if you don't have a trigger man, someone who you can count on, I mean, it really doesn't matter what you put around him. So he's doing a phenomenal job of uh, – of, of doing what he's supposed to do, but I'm really proud that he's uh, he's making other people around him better. And so uh, and that's what he has to continue to do. And that's what we need him to do. And so uh, I'm pleased with the effort that Jack's putting in, uh, getting on him a little bit about managing the game. Uh, he's taking a few sacks that uh, I don't agree with. I think that uh, he has to do that a little bit better. But uh, that's a part of his maturation. Uh, you, you can't be mad at Jack because usually when he uh, is holding the ball, he's trying to make a play. Coach, I heard uh, Coach Houston, I believe, refer to your offense as a uh, is that air raid style offense. Is that what you would consider it? Uh, yeah, it's. I mean, it's a spread uh, tempo mm -hmm. offense. Uh, we we have a lot of uh, we we do a lot of air raid principles uh, in it. So I can see why he uh, feels that way. Coach, uh, talk about some other players on offense that uh, maybe the fans will get a chance to see Saturday night and Dowdy Ficklin. Uh, Monmouth in uh, the two the last two weeks. J.D. Moore, a uh, young man we got from Abbey, Abbeville, has uh, really been stepping up in the uh, running back department. Uh, Kyrus Barnett has been doing a really good job. Uh, O-line looks like they're starting to, you know, start being the people movers we need them to be. And just uh, overall has some receivers. Garrett Swarton had a really good first week. Uh, uh, Jeffrey Wall. So we, we, we still are trying, as you know, it's early in the season. And uh, you're still trying to figure out uh, if – what you've seen in practice is going to match up when the live bullet starts uh, start, start flying. And uh, so we're still in that process of uh, trying to uh, figure out. But those are a few guys who come right to mind who have uh, stepped up and made some plays when we needed them to over the last two weeks. Coach, speaking of players, uh, it, w without looking at your roster, I believe you got a couple of guys on your roster from Eastern North Carolina. I believe you have a player from uh, J.H. Rose High School in Greenville and a player from West Craven. 
Mm -hmm. That would be Chandre Mims and Ben Harris. Okay. Uh, can you talk about those two guys? And uh, I'm sure they're excited uh, about coming home. You know what, Chandre, man, he, uh, Chandre is, I mean, he, he's just excited about football. Chandre is a, a nut, man. He's absolutely a guy you want on your side and you do not want to play against him. A uh, very, very resilient young man has an unbelievable story, man, about just the adversity he's had to go to to get to this point. So uh, he just loves playing football. I mean, that dude loves to practice. And so uh, you see him, man, and I mean, it is the same way Monday through Friday, the way it is on Saturday. Uh, ben, man, is uh, interesting because he also went to the same high school as our athletic director, and his parents actually work at ECU. So I know he has a little extra, a uh, little on being from there. That's why he's from there, because his parents work at the university. So uh, I was actually teasing him today because uh, he has not looked that good. I told him, I said, Ben, you haven't looked that good, man, in like two weeks. What's going on, man? Uh, maybe we got to schedule ECU every week uh, so you can fly around and just uh, look great. But uh, he started laughing. But uh, I'm sure it's a big deal whenever you get a chance to go home and play in front of the, your home crowd. And I'm pulling for both of those young men. And you mentioned your athletic director, Jeff Barber, uh, was here for a long time, uh, ran the Pirate Club at East Carolina, uh, very well thought of and well liked uh, at ECU. Uh, how's your relationship with him? Hopefully good. No, okay, I can't notice, but the, uh, the the last name, I mean, uh, are you uh, any relation there? I mean, you you, you got incentive. <laughs> Did Jeff pay you to say that? You got to tell me what the to that. Uh, actually, actually, to my knowledge, we are not related, uh, <laughs> but uh, everything I said is true. But uh, to my knowledge, me and Jeff are not related. All right, man. So, uh, and you didn't take the bait. So Jeff didn't pay you to say that, but, uh, no, Jeff say, oh, man, we have a great relationship working together. Uh, we're all trying to roll in the, the same direction, man, trying to build something special here for Christ and, uh, trying to just lead these young people by following Christ and just, again, trying to, uh, just really get Charleston Southern, the legacy, the tradition of it really going, uh, in the right direction, uh, so that we can, you know, make some noise. Coach, you guys, uh, you and, and uh, Jeff are great because uh, he did a wonderful job at Liberty. I mean, everybody talks about Liberty now. Look at if you want to see the the seeds that guy planted, and now it's growing. Yeah. And um, and, and he really did a great job at Liberty, and I, I feel like he'll do the same thing if he's already doing it now. I'm sure at Charleston Southern, right? Man, that is the hope and the prayer, right? I mean, I see what Liberty has, and uh, we definitely will uh, welcome any in, in all of that. So uh, that is the mindset I'm sure Dr. Costin had when he uh when our president hired him and uh, I pray that uh, we can duplicate or even, you know, exceed that uh, here at uh, CSU. Coach, tell us about your ball club defensively. Uh, defensively, man, we got a lot of vets, a lot of old heads, uh, and that's a good and a bad thing, right? Uh, so uh, you, you, it's funny because uh, you talk about those uh, six year, those super seniors and those guys who are around and uh, man, they act just like old men though. I mean, they act like they 10 year veterans. I mean, you got to I mean, it is funny uh, the way they just act and the way it's coach them, old man. But uh, in, in all seriousness, though, uh, we have some veterans there, some guys who have played a, a lot of football. So that's always comforting. Uh, coach Zane Vance does a phenomenal job with the culture that they have within our uh, football ministry culture. And so uh, you start talking about Nick Sally's of the world. You start talking about Chandra Mims. You start talking about Anton Williams. Everything starts up front with that D line. Then you have guys like Justin McIntyre, uh, linebacker court. And then you have Cody Klein and some other guys who played a lot of football. So uh, we're blessed to have a lot of guys who are battle tested. And uh, we're going to get tested this week. So uh, it's good that they've been through the fire. And uh, you just hope they respond. Coach, how's your special teams looking uh, so far? Are you kicking game, punter, kick coverage? Uh, is it on point? You know what, man? Uh, we actually got one block last week, so uh, that is never what you want to have happen, right? Uh, the good thing is it was actually just execution error, and so you can get that uh, you can get that uh, situated just with personnel and things of that nature. But uh, it, it, that's always one of the deals, man. That it's always a work in progress. Everything is always a work in progress. I mean, you it, what you did last week doesn't matter uh, going into the next week, and I mean, it all it, every week is uh, starting over from scratch, trying to build on what you've done well while trying to improve upon those deficiencies that are that are there with everyone at some point in some phase because you you, you see it every year uh we, we saw it a couple weeks ago with jacksonville state over florida state and of course there's been others this year uh, the fcs over fbs upsets happen what does it take f to do that i mean is it is it is it just you know one team being motivated more than the other and going out there and executing at a higher level 
It, what do you think it takes to, to for, for an FCS, in, just in general, obviously every game's different, but for an FCS to to beat an F, uh, FBS program? You know, I, uh, I would just kind of defer to the fact that football is – I mean, it goes back to the fundamentals of football, right? And so it's blocking and tackling and who can execute the best. And uh, you you hear the, the saying on even, any given, you know, they kind of talk about in the NFL on any given Sunday was well, the same thing. Any given Saturday, any given Friday, I mean, the ball can bounce your way. It can bounce against you. Uh, it's how you manage that adversity that's going to happen uh, at some point during the game. And it's how consistently consistent you can be to me, to play your game, regardless of who you're playing, right? And so when I talk about our championship habits and our standards, that's what we're trying to play to, regardless of who our opponent is, which gives us the best chance, no matter who we're playing, to come out with a victory. Coach, you didn't play, obviously, last fall, but you played, uh, was it four games in the spring? Mm -hmm. And we we're talking to you back in the summertime. I just want to get your take. Did it really make any difference? I know there was a lot of talk about people saying if you played in the spring. I remember back in January when people yeah. were worried about the athletes. Have you seen any kind of difference with playing in the spring versus um, not playing last year in the fall? You know what? Uh, as a coach, I don't think you ever want to turn down live reps. And so it definitely uh, helped because if not, you would have went an entire year without football. And so football is one of those sports where – you can only get better by playing it and you can't play it at home. I mean, you really need the the contest in order to really go out and get better and you need the practice time to develop. And so uh, I think it's so, uh, so new. It's so early in the season that you can't really have an assessment because the guys are big, fast, strong, resilient. I think uh, as we get into the the later in the later stages of the season, uh, you may start seeing something and you may not, but I don't know if it's early enough to say, you know, one way or the other, how playing in the spring versus not playing uh, affected us or had any effect. And there's always and, and just another topic related to that. You always hear these pundits and media that, that are always, you know, talking power five, power five, and wanting to move the so-called group of five and the FCS to the spring. Uh, I would imagine, what, what are your thoughts on that? I, I know for me, I didn't see a lot of coverage of FCS football this past spring. And, you know, we were in the middle of baseball season here. So, you know, we, we you know, as a as an outsider of an FBS program, I didn't follow it as much as I thought I would. Um, I, I think football should be played in the fall. I have no interest in seeing FCS or Group of Five move to the spring permanently. Absolutely, man. Football is meant to be played in the in the fall. And uh, I just think that was – conversation uh different things that you know just the general stuff that happens you know the water cooler talk and all of that stuff but uh I, I don't think you'll find anybody that will say that they rather flip and play in the spring as opposed to playing in the fall now i'll tell you what i will and i know this is something that's been floating out there i think it would be good if you could play a spring game versus someone else you know start moving to that yeah. especially where we're located where you have your Clemson's, your South Carolina, your Coastals, you have other schools because the one thing everyone, and I don't care if it's power five or not, what you struggle with in the spring is depth, right? And actually having a quality spring game because there's going to be a position that's going to be depleted just because you you've lost your seniors and you haven't brought the freshmen on. And I think it can also from an FCS standpoint, be a good, another revenue stream. And so I am in favor of that because I think that it'll give you kind of what we got in the spring, right? Uh, Kyle, which was what we got a more in-depth evaluation because we were able to see our guys against someone else. But uh, to say a total season, I don't think you'll find anybody that would be up for that. No doubt. Coach, uh, I know that you're obviously – from a, uh, I guess, a Power Five school, obviously, even, with, even though you're outside of the conference, independent with Notre Dame. But what are your, what's your thoughts on conference realignment um, from the standpoint of Notre Dame, but also as a college football fan and a guy that loves the game so much? How do you feel about the recent movement of Texas and Oklahoma to South Carolina? Um, excuse me, the SEC, Lord. You know what, man? I, you also talking to. Uh... That, so uh, obviously I'm Notre Dame alumni and uh, it, it actually is funny when you say uh, power five, I, I, my, my chest sticks out a little bit because it goes power five and Notre Dame. So I definitely want Notre Dame to stay independent because uh, that is just one of the things you enjoy about being a Notre Dame alumnus, someone who's worked there. But as far as the SEC, uh, you, you also got to realize I'm from Florida, born and raised. And when you grew, when you grew up in the South, man, it's SEC or nothing. And so to me, that realignment just goes to show, man, that the SEC is usually two to three steps ahead of everyone else. Right. And so 
what they do over there, man, is phenomenal. Uh, I, I just love football, right? And I think that uh, I, I don't think that uh, a lot of the rivalries will go away because I think that coaches want to play big games, and I think they'll find a way to get games scheduled. Uh, regardless of conferences. Uh, you've seen uh, Auburn, I mean, just Auburn, Penn State, just last week, right? And I don't think those things are going to go away because coaches want to play the best level of competition possible, and I don't think the conferences necessarily are going to uh, stop those out-of-conference games from happening. Coach, as we're recording this late on Tuesday evening, um, tell us your thoughts on Mike Houston's ball club. Obviously, uh, Tuesday is a pretty heavy work day. Uh, so, so tell us your thoughts on Coach's uh, club and what he has going on with East Carolina. You know what, man? Obviously, he's done a phenomenal job at James Madison. Uh, makes sense why he was a, a definite hire there. I remember kind of following that thing with the whole uh, UNC Charlotte deal, and then you, uh, ECU made sure they uh, did what they needed to do to uh, land him. But, uh, man, uh, when you look at it, you say, man, they played a, a really, really good game against South Carolina and came up a little bit short. They got to be flying high, man, because they they beat a really good Marshall team. And it wasn't just the fact that they got the win. As a coach, you love those gut check games where you have to come back in the fourth quarter, where you got to fight back, dig deep as a, a, a football ministry and show what you're made of and still be able to come out with a win. So, uh, man, obviously uh, they are – on par with where they want to be right now uh, going into season three. This is where stuff still start, should start peaking and turning around, and it looks like it is for them. So I could just imagine that they're uh, full of confidence, uh, really excited about the direction they're going in, and uh, I got to think that the ECU alumni is very pleased with the direction they see them headed in as well. Coach, uh, I had a question for you, Coach, as far as coming into Dowdy Fake on Saturday night. What do you have to do to beat East Carolina? You know what? Uh, it's what I've told our guys, man. We do not have to beat ECU. That is not our goal. Our goal is to go again to uh, play CSU football, uh, to play to and through our standards and, and, and our championship habits and standards. So to me, that is the goal. Every week we go out, that's irregardless of result, irregardless of score. And by doing that, that gives us the best opportunity to win every week. And so trying to be consistently consistent, something we haven't done. We did it the first week. We didn't do it last week. So, again, it's really focusing on what we need to do in order to just put ourselves in a position to play CSU football. Who are some guys that really stand out? Um, you know, when, when you turn on the film, you know, you have Holt Naylor's uh, struggled some of the first two games and uh, maybe have been protected. Got it right well. now. <laughs> yeah, but and, and then he and then he had the fourth quarter and then had a good overall game. I uh, didn't didn't throw a pick against Marshall. Uh, two tremendous running backs, Devontae Harris from South Carolina, and then uh, Pete Mitchell, and obviously Sneed Johnson, et cetera, at receiver. To to talk about some of the uh, things that stood out about the Pirates. Well, you know what? It's funny because I think it's in alignment with, uh, as I talked about uh, in college football or it's just the game of football. If you don't have a trigger, man, you really don't have anything. Right. So everything begins and ends with the stability at quarterback. And so getting that play late in the game, getting him on track. I mean, that had to help. It trickled over to the receivers who obviously when the quarterback is playing well, uh, he brings uh, he raises the game of other people around him. Uh, when I look at them on defense, man, they get after you. Those guys, I mean, they do a good job flying around, corralling the football. They tackle the football very well. I mean, they are constantly looking, stripping at the ball, raking at the ball, trying to create turnovers. Uh, and so you just see a, a, a unit or a group of young men that seem to be having fun, uh, getting better every week and playing with a lot of confidence. I'm curious, Coach, uh, as, as we start to wrap this up, just, just, just from asking an opposing coach, Watching film of Holt Nailers, does he seem more comfortable to you when we go tempo? Does he seem more? <laughs> I don't want to give him any ideas, man. <laughs> come out, come out in the two minute, and Coach Kirkpatrick. Yeah, not, not, not gonna offer up a suggestion either way on that one. <laughs> what about what about Tyler hey, Steve, quarterback? No, noble attempt though, Kyle. I, I was. Now, I was being serious because like, that's what I see, and I was just curious from somebody who knows more than I do that, you know, you, you ask one of our own coaching staff, you're going to get coach speak. Uh, so I was just curious asking a, a Division One head coach if he's seeing what I see. Yeah, you know, the last thing I need is for them to come out throwing that thing around and going really fast. So, I'm a, again, I'm going to defer on both of those that uh, they – I guarantee they got a great game plan. They know how to use them. They do not need my insight or my uh, opinion on uh, – when he's at his best. 
uh, one one last question we have for you, Coach. What uh, if we come to Charleston? What's your favorite restaurant there? Oh man, favorite restaurant in Charleston. Yeah, yeah that's hard, man. Charleston is like uh, being in New Orleans now. I mean, you yeah. got seafood. I mean, well, I'm a seafood person, period. But uh, man, food is religion. If I gotta go with somewhere, now you just gonna tie me down. I'm gonna go with Halls because those are my folks over there, man. The guys at Halls Chop House. Really good friends of ours, so I'm gonna I'm a put them out there. But uh, my three sons, I mean, it's so many. You cannot go wrong. Uh, food is a religion here. Uh, whatever you want, we have it. None of it is healthy. None of it is healthy, which is why I have to work out five days a week still. But uh, it is all good, man. Sounds like you could run for uh, not only be the coach, you could be the mayor of Charleston as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, man. I'm uh, I, I, like uh, Coach, uh, my man Coach Zane says on defense, we're trying to get a guy in the gap and we're trying to find a way to end every uh, offensive possession with a kick. I got enough on my plate. Uh, I'm good with this. Well, Coach, thank you so much. You were generous for your time. I know that you spent uh, time after practice to be with us tonight. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on Saturday. All right, man. Thank you very much for your time. You gentlemen have a very blessed rest of the evening.